Welcome to Module 38 in this series of lectures on statistical process improvement and statistical quality assurance. We're going to speak in this module about so-called prediction and tolerance intervals, thinking of them as an alternative way uh, to state or to quantify process capability. Uh, rather than uh, speaking of measures like CP, CPK that we've just considered in Module 37, uh, we're going to consider characterizing process output uh, in terms of what can be said about individual future values uh, drawn from the process, and doing that, of course, based on data in hand. Uh, if I know process parameters, uh, making statements about future values generated by the process is, is, is probability. Uh, if, for example, I model individual values as normal, with some mean, some standard deviation, uh, I can make statements like there's a 90% chance that the next x is in a certain interval. I can equally say that 90% uh, of all future outcomes are in uh, that same interval. Uh, the rub comes when I don't know process parameters, and I admit that I don't know process parameters, uh, but I have data. Uh, and I need to try to hedge this kind of a statement or redo that those kinds of statements uh, in light of sample variability, in light of uncertainty. Uh, we can do that for normal processes uh, based on uh, X bar and S, we can do it in general uh, using minimum or maximum values in a sample, and that's what we're going to do in this module. Let's begin with methods for normal processes, uh, and we're going to talk first about uh, trying to locate a single in a single additional observation from a process. Uh, and the methodology for doing that is to make use of so-called prediction limits. Uh, here are prediction limits based on an assumption that we're sampling from a normal distribution, a normal process. Uh, they have the form x bar plus or minus a multiple of a t multiple of the sample standard deviation. And the multiplier here is, uh, is, is something you may not have seen before. It's not simply uh, 1 over n, which is underneath the root, which would be what you'd have if you were estimating the mean. Uh, we're not trying to estimate the mean. We're trying to uh, locate uh, an individual. And so it's not just 1 over n, but there's, a, there's an additional 1 underneath that uh, square root because we're trying to capture uh, an individual uh, observation. Uh, to return to that uh, data set of Table 5.7 in Vardaman and Job, there uh, 50 angles had an average of 4.711 degrees, a standard deviation of 0.984 degrees, and were reasonably uh, normal looking. Uh, if I was to then ask the question, where do I th think the next, where do I think one more uh, angle value would fall, uh, I could make prediction limits for it. And uh, here, for example, are 95% prediction limits. This is x bar. There's s. Sorry, there is the t value. That's the t value for 49 degrees of freedom. It's the upper 2.5 percent point. Here is s. And here's the sample size. And that gives me uh, 44.117 plus or minus about 2 degrees. And uh, the interpretation of this is that in some sense I'm uh, roughly, I'm 95% sure that that interval will catch the next angle drilled. This 95% confidence uh, 
figure is a, you should think of that as a lifetime batting average. If I go through the whole process of selecting a sample, making an interval, uh, and therefore predicting the next value out of the out of the process, take one more observation out of the process and see whether I succeed or not. Over my lifetime, if I do this many, many times, uh, I can expect that about 95% of those uh, experiences of taking a sample, making an interval, and checking to see whether the next value from the interval, from the uh, processes in that interval, uh, I can expect to have been right about 95% uh, of the time. Uh, another way to view this is not as trying to locate uh, the next observation from the uh, distribution, but rather trying to locate some large fraction of the distribution or some large fraction of all future outcomes. Uh, we can do that if we assume that we're sampling from a normal process by taking uh, the sample mean plus or minus an appropriate multiplier of the sample standard deviation uh, where that tau 2 figure is coming from a table in uh, Vardaman and Job uh, and is our special you know, those constants tau 2 are made uh, specially to uh, capture certain fractions of the population with certain reliability. Uh, to illustrate this, we can go back to this uh, previous example and think again about the 50 angles that are in table 5.7 and uh, think about trying to capture 95% uh, of all future values and being 99% sure that we've done that. Uh, the nine, there's two figures here. There is the fraction of the uh, future values one is trying to uh, locate, and then there's the reliability of the method uh, that uh, I purposely set two different values there so we can keep them straight. The 99% confidence level talks about how sure you are that the interval works. The 95% talks about uh, what fraction of the distribution you're trying to, to capture. Uh, if you read directly from table A9A of Vardaman and Job, uh, the appropriate multiplier here, this tau 2 figure, is 2.58. And so if you take uh, the sample mean plus or minus 2.58 times the sample standard deviation, you get this interval. Uh, that is uh, somewhat wider than the prediction limit, uh, the prediction interval. Uh, it's doing a job where it's uh, trying to capture not a single observation uh, with 95% certainty, but capture 95% of all observations with 99% uh, certainty. Uh, and in this case, the interval that's required to do that is wider than for the prediction uh, interval. Uh, again, uh, the, 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 one needs to think through how to interpret these uh, methods or these, these intervals. And the, the thought exper experiment that goes with uh, tolerance intervals is this. You think of drawing. Uh, multiple samples for each one uh, making the interval x bar plus or minus tau times s uh, for each one using a normal distribution calculation based on the true process parameters and seeing what fraction of the of the distribution is covered uh, using that uh, that interval and to see if that fraction is at least the desired value P. 
Uh, if it if it is, the interval is a success. If not, the interval is a failure. And the confidence level for the method is then one of these lifetime batting average uh, things. It's also possible uh, to make prediction and tolerance intervals uh, based on minimum and maximum values in a sample. Uh, and if you, if you use minimum and maximum values in a sample to make these uh, prediction and tolerance intervals, you don't have to uh, restrict only to uh, situations where you believe you're sampling a normal process. Uh, on the other hand, these intervals tend to be uh, pretty big. Uh, here's, here's the basic idea using the two-sided version. If I take a sample, look at the smallest value in the sample to the largest one, uh, that, gives me a, uh, that gives me an interval. And I can think of that either as predicting one more observation or as uh, trying to capture some fraction of all future observations. If I think of it in terms of predicting one more observation, then the appropriate confidence level to associate with that interval uh, is n minus 1 over n plus 1. If I'm trying to capture a fraction p of all future observations, then the associated confidence level is this piece here. Um, if you go back again to this uh, set of data from Table 5.7, the smallest and largest numbers in the, in the data set are these two. And that interval might be used either as a prediction interval for one more whole angle or uh, as an interval trying to capture some fraction of the uh, of all uh, angles produced by the process. Used as a prediction interval, the confidence level is 96.1%. Uh, used as a tolerance interval for say 95% of uh, the angles, this calculation ultimately gives me a 72.1% uh, confidence level for this interval used as a tolerance interval. Uh, the Interpretation of the confidence level associated with minimum and maximum with intervals based on minimum and maximum values is exactly the same as for the normal distribution prediction and tolerance intervals. Uh, the news here is that uh, these confidence levels are guaranteed even if the distribution is uh, not necessarily uh, normal. Uh, I should say that it's possible to use, to make one-sided intervals both uh, normal-based prediction and tolerance intervals and these uh, intervals based on, on extreme values in the, in, in the sample. Uh, and uh, one simply adjusts the confidence levels uh, appropriately. Uh, here is a set of uh, uh, summary formulas for this this material. Uh, you can find the material in Vardaman and Job. Uh, and here are two-sided intervals, one-sided intervals. Here. Are these are based on, these are prediction intervals and tolerance intervals based on a normal assumption. Uh, here are prediction intervals, tolerance intervals based on any stable process assumption using uh, extreme values in the sample.